So let's get started. Um, welcome everybody. Glad you've been, uh, you're here. Uh, hoping you have a great uh, DrupalCon. Uh, it's only a few hours left and uh, it's all done, except for contribution day tomorrow. Be there. <laughs> um, today we're gonna talk about how JSON API 1.1 will make Drupal better. Um, my name is Bjorn Brala. I've uh, been the babysitter of uh, Little Rooster for a while. He's a good friend of mine. He's being sold right now. I'm not very happy about that, but it's okay. I'm a CTO at Swiss, uh, Dutch Digital Agency. I'm a core maintainer for JSON API, and I'm a member of the board of uh, Dutch Drupal Association. And I do way too many other things also <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, no worries. So, Swiss is a Dutch digital agency from Leiden, the Netherlands, and we do sustainable digital transformations, uh, mostly for nonprofit and uh, government <laughs> and healthcare. And we are big fans of JSON API. So that's why we sponsor my time on JSON API in core, but we also have a quality PHP client for JSON API, which we also have open sourced and use quite a lot. Our default is JSON API. If we need to communicate between systems, first try JSON API. If that's impossible, then we might try something else. So JSON API 1.1. Uh, is the minor upgrade, or are we looking at really a major improvement? One of the good things that JSON API promises is the fact that new versions will always be backwards compatible. So we never remove, we only add new parts to the specifications. And that's great, because that makes my life a lot easier, and perhaps your life a lot easier also. Because if it works, it works and it won't suddenly break because uh, a new revision comes out and you need to fix your stuff. There's only new goodies to use. So that's good and fun. So that makes a really good fit also for Drupal because we have a very, very strict backwards compatibility promise and the JSON API helps us keep that promise. <coughs> if we, JSON API has had a few changes in regards to 1.0. Um, in an overview, there's uh, a few things that have been added. We've got profiles and extensions, so we can start <coughs> extending the spec or describing the spec better. There is uh, a new feature called add members, which I also want to call cheaters, but we'll get back to that later. Uh, there's some improvements in how errors are handled and um, how you as a developer can see what is wrong. There's updates to link objects, adding uh, uh, support for the thing everyone <laughs> uses. There's a new describe by member, which we will talk about later because that's one of the awesome things that's uh, really going to be valuable for us. They added uh, local IDs, which I'm uh, uh, tempted to just ignore because it's complicated and not extremely useful. And there's a ton of little editorial improvements where eh, writing a spec is, pre is pretty hard, so small words matter <laughs> sometimes. So it's most, mostly uh, editorial. If we first have a look at profiles and extensions, which I think is the meat of the new JSON API spec, um, profiles and extensions are two ways to define or extend the uh, specification. So on the one hand, you have extensions, which mean you create new things in the, in the API. Uh, they call the, those hey, defining additional specification semantic, semantics. We'll get back to that later. Mm -hmm. And you'll have profiles because uh, JSON API has quite a few parts of it where it's like, well, the implementer can choose how they do this, yeah, for example, filtering or pagination or stuff like that. But 
something that's quite important is the semantics, yeah? So on the one hand, you have the specification semantics, which is just everything <laughs> described in the specification. Um, and they collectively call those specification semantics. So you cannot touch those. But there are certain exceptions to that rule. <laughs> those are explicitly mentioned in the specification. Uh, so that certain document members or query parameters or perhaps even processing rules uh, can be defined by the server, let's say, yeah, the JSON API server. And those are called implementation semantics. Um, you have to communicate, though, what, those, what your profiles are and extensions are. They choose to do that, chose to do that through... And, uh, uh, the content type and add in uh, the profile URL uh, in the response. That's pretty handy because if you're talking to an, uh, a JSON API server, you as a developer can see what kind of profiles are supported by the server and directly go to the documentation or definition of what that profile means. So uh, discoverability gets quite the upgrade. Um, for extensions, it's pretty much the same. Uh, just uh, it's only AXT, it's a uh, profile in the header, and uh, that way you can tell them, yeah, I'm going to use this. There's also a human readable version, yeah, because headers are annoying. <laughs> At least I find headers annoying to, to, to find. But in your response, you can have just, uh, there's a list also from yeah, these extensions are supported or used by this uh, server, and these profiles are used by this server. That way, you don't even need to, uh, 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 need to look at the headers or whatever, you can just have a look at your response. They do say, do not use this to uh, know as a client what uh, extensions are supported, use the headers. Yeah? So this is just quality of life thing. Let's have a look at the extension that actually does extend the specification. So adding uh, one of the uh, things you could do is, for example, uh, the JSON API does not have the put verb, for example. Right? That's not part of the specification. You could have uh, could describe that and put your own logic behind that, if you like. <laughs> Not sure why you would do that, but you could. One of the examples that is used uh, by JSON API itself is using uh, adding versioning to requests and responses. So here you have a response as, uh, as, uh, as you would get. Yeah. So we have the extension. Uh, communicated uh, that it uses the extension version. And there's a new weird one in the middle of the response. We have a version, colon, ID, and then a version number. What you might notice is the prefix. Yeah, so there's uh, uh, extensions have to define a namespace, let's say, in which they uh, communicate. So if they add something to the specification, it also always needs to be prefixed with a, with a namespace. This is mostly for uh, 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 lessening the chance, let's say, for different extensions to conflict, because you're always namespaced. And also, this means that uh, it automatically will never conflict with uh, the JSON API spec itself because they will only define attributes that are uh, letters A to Z. So if you're not using those, it will never break. At least that's what they promise, and I believe that. So the prefix might be a little bit cumbersome in ways, but it does allow for cool stuff and combining extension and making sure that that's stable and something you can count on. Um, an actual published uh, extension is atomic operations. I'm not sure how many of you have actually uh, run into the problem that, okay, I need to create a new resource, but before that I need an address and I need an X and a Y and a Z and I'm doing 57 requests 
before I can finally create my main resource. That's something that's at least annoyed me quite a bit in uh, how you need to handle uh, JSON API. So this extension tries to solve that by adding uh, atomic operations. And an atomic operation is a, 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 a set of operations that either uh, succeed or fail altogether. So let's see it as if, if you start a transaction, you are doing quite a lot of different uh, operations, and then at the end, if one of those has failed, you just roll back to before you where you are. So you always know that it is. So it ends at a uh, new endpoint where uh, you can define operations. You can say where uh, does this operation need to go. So here it's in the in the example. It's on the articles and relationship comments, and it adds the adds a reference to some comment. Yeah. But that's only one thing that this could be a normal <laughs> JSON API request. But it get in, gets interesting when you start doing multiple things. So what if I first add the author in my atomic operation and after that combine, uh, add that author to, uh, to my article. So you have a single request to do your whole operation and that simplifies parts of the logic, at least from, 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 uh, from your front end, quite a lot for your consumer, let's say. Um, so this could be pretty useful for Drupal, yeah? I mean, at least pretty useful for JSON API consumers, but uh, because, yeah, creating multiple resources is pretty much paid. Um, I've been thinking about the implementation, though. That might be a little bit harder than uh, then uh, it looks at the surface, yeah? Because I'm not sure we completely, yeah, I, that's gonna be a little bit hard. So it's not gonna be something that's uh, coming to JSON API in the <laughs> next six months or so. But still, it's a great chance and I think that's something we should explore and would make the life of a lot of uh, consumers a lot easier. So that's extensions, yeah? Uh, the second type, uh, we talked about is profiles. Profiles are about describing your specific implementation of JSON API. So uh, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the easy one to, to look at is filtering because the filtering in JSON API for Drupal is really great and extensive and you can do really a lot in, in filtering your, your resources. If you Compare this door to, uh, okay, I've not seen such an extensive filtering system in other JSON API server implementations. Not in the Laravel ones, not in uh, <laughs> some of the Rails ones. I've looked at quite a few. This one is really great. So that's the prime, that's a prime candidate for uh, a profile. But let's have a quick look back at how, uh, how filtering right, works right now. So, the easiest one is just filter on the field name equals a value. So this field should be this value. And you can filter on another one, and then uh, it's just filter on this field is that value, and that fil uh, field is another value. So this is a short syntax, but there's also the long, long syntax, which gives us the power to do a lot more. And this is here you see the short version for um, someone with the first name Janice and the long version where we specify three separate parts of the, of the filtering. So the path, which could be a field or field in relation, etc. The operator, which is here an encoded equal sign and the value, which is say, well, Janice. I don't know who Janice is though. And there's a lot of operators, yeah, we've got, uh, because we have, uh, we use entity queries at the back in the inside of JSON API, we can do a lot, we can do equals or not equals or greater than, is no, is not, in, in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's great. But, uh, so you could do, the first name should be one of Janice, John, and Jeff. No problem, we can do that. 
and it even uh, supports more things. Yeah, so show me the users with the job developer who have the first or last name Smith. And there you can do something that's called condition groups. Yeah, so you can create a group, say if it's and and or, and then build your filters through that. So here if you, you have a fir first filter, which is member of the or group, where the first name is Smith, or the last name is Smith, Smith and lastly, uh, and job is developer. This is something that is documented pretty great in the JSON API documentation, how to use this, how to do this. Um, uh, but uh, perhaps for people <coughs> consuming JSON API, which not always will be, uh, uh, not always will be Drupal developers, it's easier to discover if we actually have a profile, uh, profile <laughs> implemented. And that will improve the developer experience immensely. Yeah, because the, the, the people consuming Drupal JSON API will start loving JSON API more because it's easy to discover how it works. Um, and you can start describing the API inside the API. I've talked to quite a few people about how, what this could mean and how we can do. I mean, in, uh, I don't know if many of you here have used Orbit.js. Mm, no? I'm impressed. <laughs> it was a great JS uh, yes client uh, for, for supporting also uh, uh, JSON API. It's built by the guys who are uh, also built Ember, which, of Ember JS, which are the uh, founding fathers, let's say, of JSON API. So it's really the people who fought up JSON API also made that client. And I talked to them and they will support our profile if we publish it. Yeah? So then uh, people using OpenJS will have an easier time to, for example, use our filters. Therefore, of course, we have also our own JSON API client, which we uh, support and which we will add <laughs> profiles, of course. Let's take a good example. Yeah? We've also got uh, good relations with the guys in creating the Laravel JSON API server. Uh, great implementation. And uh, because of Laravel's uh, uh, eloquent models, which is the database uh, ORM, it's really easy to do the same filters there. So he would accept also the same profile in the Laravel JSON API server. So something like that could help Drupal immensely to, one, strengthen the ecosystem around JSON API, but also get more of the word out about how good the JSON API of Drupal is, which would be great. Um, you do free, of course, if you publish a profile, you do freeze in, in a way, and the way you're filtering perhaps works. Um, but I don't think that's really a problem because Drupal is also quite uh, 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 won't change how things work normally. Yeah, we have the backwards compatibility problem uh, promise, so the fact that it's written down doesn't really matter that much. So I'd like to ask you if there's if you look at profiles and extensions, what are the kind of things you might run into or uh, uh, you'd like to see as, uh, uh, yeah, as an extension of profile. Does someone have an idea? There's a few things that we could do, yeah, to uh, uh, <laughs> better communicate our API. There's a few things we do a little bit weird, yeah, so we have a partial success that's uh, a bit of a weird one when you get a list of entities it might not completely fill but kind of fill but not fill we'll talk about that more our shorting is a little bit weird and uh, pagination is another one of those parameters that json api doesn't tell you how to do it if that's cursion based or whatever 
So partial success is something that uh, Mathieu AO Ipso already wrote the specification for, which does need a, a good look and good review to see if that's complete. Um, and it's mostly about the fact that resource lists uh, could exclude entities in that list. So for example, if you have a list of articles and you don't have access to one of those articles, it will be removed from the list. It's a bit of an <laughs> annoying feature, but a feature nevertheless. And uh, there's quite a few people who are a bit confused about that and how to use that. Another one is sorting. Yeah, we have the normal JSON API way of sor sorting using a single uh, parameter and comma separated field list, either with a minus uh, for descending or, or even sorting on relations. But there's also a long version, which is not part of the spec and could be something we describe, where we split up the different parts of the sort into um, array values, let's say. The last one is pagination. Uh, in Drupal, we chose to use uh, offset and limit. Uh, there's a lot of different paging uh, strategies available. So it would be good to at least tell the consumers how our pagination works so they can uh, uh, adjust to that. A lot of the times you don't really need to build your own pagination uh, handler because there's always like next links and previous links and stuff like that. But it is still informative on how could you build the pagination list. There's a thing that's perhaps something we need to be wary of. And that's the fact that it's good that everything can be specified or written out or, or, or published as a part of the of an extension of the specification. Um, but so we could say, yeah, this, this server, Drupal install, has versioning enabled, so you can expect versioning information in your request. Or it has... Um, uh, the meta metadata can co can contain internal IDs or uh, uh, the, 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 the taxonomy name is in the metadata of uh, of a taxonomy stuff like that. We could specify all of that, but I'm a little bit wary if that's really worth it to go into the full try to fully specify how our requests look. It's uh, something of a, 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 a risk, really. So next up, next up are our cheaters, which are uh, ad members. The members in JSON API are basically JSON attributes. But because there's an attributes attribute in the JSON API request, that's a little bit uh, confusing. So they called it members. Members is a little bit broader also because it could be also be the name of a, a request parameter or get parameter or stuff like that. Um, ad members are something weird. So there are members starting with ads, which is pretty obvious. And they state that they can uh, uh, appear anywhere in the document. So it doesn't matter where. Yeah, sure. You want to add member? Yeah, sure. Plop one down. That's fine. No problem. And ad member should be ignored by clients and servers as being real data. So an ad member in an attributes is not an attribute of that resource, but just some sort of meta information. Um, one of the things you might be able to use that for is JSON-LD. Uh, so what if your uh, JSON link data is in the JSON responses of your JSON API, uh, of your JSON <laughs> API server. Uh, this is something that's now allowed, and what you could do. I'm slightly wary about, <laughs> I mean, it's interesting, yeah, sure. I'm not sure if this is a, a way we want to go, yeah. Um, this does allow for 
Uh, the JSON link data to communicate that in the single request. So you could have a front-end application that then also knows the whole all day. But it is really a little bit of cheating. I mean, you could have it anywhere, an attribute or something somewhere nested or even somewhere in the links, uh, links section. And I'm not sure if we really, really want to do that. Unfortunately, we do need to at least acknowledge the fact that that's a pain. <laughs> um, so we need to handle add members, or more, more, more precisely, we need to ignore add members. But there's perhaps a few chances where it might shine. I mean, what if one-way attributes? So I don't know, some uh, computer property that is not really saved in the in the entity. Could that be useful to? Uh, communicate through an uh, ad member or uh, image derivatives. Yeah, you have an image field and one of the solutions the community came up with is communicating that in the metadata of the resource. Might be easier to read if you have a, a, an ad member near the image field with the different image styles. It could be. And of course, the obvious one is the JSON link data and perhaps even meta tag information, where you uh, uh, can communicate some of the information you get there, move it up, but it's not information you want to send back or update or put or just do something with. So, is it worth it? I'm kind of skeptical of using these kind of random mem uh, members in documents. But I can imagine that if you are in control of the server and the clients, that might be an easy way to implement some, some extra communication to the front end. But a lot of time I feel that the existing meta information facility is, uh, should be enough uh, because you have already fulfilled <laughs> that. It's only a little bit farther from uh, perhaps the source of the data. Now, the next one is uh, the improved linked objects, an RFC 8, uh -oh. uh, 8288, or is it 8228, uh -oh. uh, links. So, basically web links. Yeah, so um, uh, JSON API decided to at least join and specify that you can make links web links. And this does open up a more standard way of representing links. The fact is that Drupal already uses uh, those properties. We saw things like uh, the, the, the rel tag or some other of the allowed uh, web link tags in their links. Uh, but now it's official <laughs> that you can do that. Um, this does open up, it doesn't really open up new possibilities, but it is a trigger to perhaps think of what kind of links are relevant in the context of a resource in JSON API. So perhaps uh, you always want the offer link if applicable. Maybe you should want uh, a link to the uh, collection endpoint of a, of, a, of a resource. Or at some point you might want an edit form and link there. It's all valid relation, uh, rel tags for, for links. Especially in, uh, when uh, <laughs> If we get an endpoint for version history, that would be really awesome if we can just link in the resource to, okay, where can I find the list of versions for this resource? We cannot do that right now. Same for working copies, yeah? Because uh, if you have workflow or you have, for, you have forward revisions, knowing the fact there is perhaps a forward revision for you and previewing that could make it a lot easier to get that. So that's fun. I think, and uh, it could help uh, discoverability quite a lot. Next up, the describe by member. And this is one that I'm really excited about. The describe by member is uh, a link to the description document of a resource. So this could be JSON schema or perhaps open API for the specific resource you're looking at. And that's that's, that, that's just insanely useful. 
Um, so this could be a link to, uh, uh, this is a comment, and uh, there's a uh, related link to the comments overview. And there's a describe by where you can uh, actually show the schema of the comments. This could be extremely useful for Drupal, uh, especially in the near future. I mean, having all resources uh, described by schemas and uh, enabling things like uh, validating the data you are about to send to your endpoint, for example. There are great validation packages for just give me data, is this a valid schema? Um, but also for the developers, again, yeah, if you're consuming an API and you want to know how the resource looks, here you go, this is how it looks, and you just have it in your request. So you only need to know, give me the endpoint, give me access, and I know everything. That, that's insanely useful. Um, this is closer by than you might think. In uh, pitch, uh, Pittsburgh, sorry, there was a, a, a there were for, there was this Pittsburgh initiative, yeah, and one of the things that got funded was uh, JSON field storage and schema support. So, okay, the JSON field support that's very hard because we uh, do a lot of things with different database backends. But one of the things that also added was added there was schema support. Uh, Brett Jones is actually working on that right now. And uh, we at least have a, a, a way of doing it and a way of using tight data from Drupal and the serialization of the normalization of resources, uh, how we do it right now, to generate actual schemas of the resources you ask for. So there's actually a pretty good chance that in the coming months we get support for uh, schemas generated in Drupal itself. And that's going to be really, really great. Especially if we start communicating that to the people who use our API. So, summarizing. There's a few things that are happening that might be happening. One is we can finally share our awesome implementations with profiles, um, which means that we can uh, 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 get better clients, get better support outside Drupal for the API in Drupal, which is going to help Drupal immensely. Um, there's a few published extensions we should actually evaluate and see if it's realistic to either implement those or use those as inspiration to uh, make our API better. The whole using of schemas to communicate resource structure is going to be a game changer. I really feel that's going to be a game changer. And uh, yeah, the ad member really is cheating. Uh, <laughs> convince me otherwise, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do it. Um, and we could, should explore some new, uh, more link options in the future to see what's useful for us and for the people who consume our API. There's a, a few other exciting things I want to mention just in regards to JSON API, because there's people here who like JSON API, I hope. Uh, uh, so, hmm, there's one extra. So the uh, the publishing of the profiles, yeah. Uh, the schema support that actually is coming. Wim Leers is working on uh, config validation, which will end up enabling us to expose config through JSON API. And then perhaps in the future we can actually do what we are dreaming of for like I don't know seven years, and that's. What if there's a decoupled backend interface? God knows. <laughs> and lastly is Brian Perry, who did uh, the decoupled menus initiative uh, earlier, is now working on a Drupal API client, which is mostly uh, <laughs> install and go way to communicate with JSON API in uh, uh, yeah, through Node. Yeah? So that's uh, also a great initiative to at least make it easy to get started. Um, 
so there's really a lot of things to get excited about. And I think that if you look at what's happening right now, that we have a pretty good year in front of us with a lot of innovation and a lot of new features and uh, a lot of ease of use for JSON API. Thank you for your time.